Hey guys, and welcome to How to Paint Bella Dama Volga using a custom scheme. So in this video, we're going to go through and uh, paint this lovely model up uh, using a, cu a custom scheme similar to that of the necromancer that I sculpted. Uh, sorry, that I um, that I painted, not sculpted, um, in a previous video when I was talking about uh, soul blight, grave lords, and some revised thoughts. Um, I'll put a link to that just in in the top right hand corner here if you're interested. But um, we're going to be using some of those colors, so blue greens, um, some pale tones, lots of blacks. I'm a big fan of neutral blacks and that sort of thing. If you've seen any of my other videos, so this is going along in that same theme. So you know, uh, um, gray ash and base with greens and browns mixed in, in, in into a sort of warm uh, color for the stonework. We're going for black wolves, not white wolves. And um, then in, into the vampire itself, we'll be doing a lot of uh, uh, blue greens for a lot of the, the clothing there and, and blacks and so on. And uh, some power tones for the face and a little bit of glazing, color glazing and that sort of thing. So it should be a really fun model. Um, there'll be an overview at the end that you can have a look at a, a more close up view of the model when it's all done, but it should be a really cool process. So um, let's get started. Okay, so to begin with, we're looking at uh, bringing in the colors on the base. So the Necromancer Cloak, that dark gray, uh, just basically painting that all over all the gravel on the base and just uh, getting those tones in. And then um, for the rock, we're mixing Ushapti with black to get like a warm dark gray. Uh, and then we're painting that as well as you'll see me do. And then once we've got those base tones down, usually takes a couple of coats, then you're going to be going through and dry brushing up that rock using uh, successive more amounts of Ushabti into that grey tone to build a, a nice bright rock because we're going to be glazing back into this and toning it down. So we build up a little bit lighter than we normally would. And then from there, you'll, you'll see me come back um, into, the, into that Necromancer cloak on the base and dry brush that up with um, lighter tones of grey up to like a, a pretty bright colour. And again, both these these stages of dry brushing up to lighter tones on both the rock and and the and the gravel um, we're going a little lighter than we would because it is eventually going to be toned down with glazes, both green and brown and a few color glazes as well, which you'll see me do in a later step but because the glaze drops the values down, um, you need it to go a little bit brighter. So once we've done all that, You'll see me come through and start to paint the tree, and the tree is built up with a rhinox hide, a nice dark, rich brown, and we're building up very painterly style here, not 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 paying too much attention to individual areas on that tree, just getting the, the loose shapes down. You'll see me building in um, some green in there mixed with the rhinox and build up through Bella Brown, and then finally towards the end will then come through and do a light dry brush with a white mixed in into that brown so that we get a nice rough barky texture for that. And then once that's all, all sorted out, we move on to that brass. And so we just mix a little bit of that Rune Lord brass in with black and build up a nice dark tone built up with silvers um, to um, give us a little bit of shine, but not too much. Again, going a little lighter than we normally would. Um, because we are going to be uh, glazing this and so then we give it a nice little brown ink wash mixed with water and then once that's dry a black ink wash and that's now all prepared for our final stages of glazing. Now be aware that when you're glazing something it's a bit different to a normal wash you want to actually add more water in so two or three drops of water into those, into those inks so that um, you get a much more translucent layer as you go on and you build it up slowly creating gradients and transitions as you're seeing me do now. So building in uh, the, the browns and greens in mixes to, to get various colors into the ground and shadows around the rock that, that connect to the ground. And then finally, we'll be building up through the color glazes as well as you're seeing me do now to get a nice varied finish. Okay, so to begin with, we're going to start off by blending up the tones in the face. And you'll see me use the neutral greys and hand painting up the, face, the, the faces and the pores. And that's, they're the most like, I guess, more focal points of the wolf. And so we want to use the brush to, to get a finer finish. And so just building up those greys and getting a nice look and going up quite bright um, just around the eyes, that sort of area. And just, just to give it some focus, um, we're not going to do that across the whole wolf because that would just be crazy. Um, so you, we're going to use a combination of dry brushing as well. So then once you've blended up those tones on the pores and the face, then you come back in with your dry brushing and just build up the, the layers of gray um, you know, getting lighter and lighter and less of the less of the model, focusing most of the highlights towards the top of all of the hair, and that will join it together to where you've hand painted it, and it should look really cool. And you'll 
it'll just make it a lot faster. You can hand paint it all, but obviously, you know, that just takes a lot longer, but it, it still comes out really nice because the focal points um, have a strong look to them. And then finally going in and um, glazing in some Grimnar purple, dark purple color into the ears, um, the gums and so on, and then painting the teeth uh, with, you know, um, the, the, the Yushapti bone, blending up with little highlights, painting the eyes and so on. Uh, now I've gone a bit more extreme on the ears. I put a lot more purple into it to give that, that sort of almost like bat-like look to the, the walls, but you don't have to do that. But it should come up uh, really cool at the end. Okay, and there we go. So we've finally got the, the base and the walls down. So that's a bit of an effort, but you know, I, I think it's a, a worthwhile one establishing all of those colors, getting that down before you start the vampire. You could do this in reverse, but this is such a complex composition. You know, if you really take a look at this, the focal point, which is the vampire, is the smallest element in that composition. The wolves are bigger than her, the the rock is bigger than her, the tree is bigger than her, everything is, is larger than her, and it makes it difficult to, um, she can get lost basically in the composition if you don't establish uh, some ground rules for how you're gonna go about it. And you can see that I've, I've kept all the tones in the mid-tone or darker for around the base and that includes the walls because the walls can dominate a lot of this this composition and, and keep drawing your eye down to here when you want the you want it to be around around the face so you know that, that that's part of um, you know those things that you're going to choose when you start out so you can see if you look in comparative terms the base we've got sort of slightly light and then we go dark on the wolf and then lighter again on the on the, the stonework and then dark again for the wolf and then the vampire is going to be um, obviously lighter and um, have all the color in it so that's going to draw your eye towards the vampire and and especially to this this area just here we can see that the sculptor has also done a lot to improve the composition here to make it easier um, and it's very admirable you can see that there's a zigzag pattern moving up towards towards the vampire from the wolf up through the the this verdict this sort of um you know uh, angle here across the 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 rock and then up through that along the line of that um, that weapon up up into the face so it's trying to help you establish that she's also at the top of that triangular um, kind of formation she's at the top so these are all things that are helping to make her the focus but it is very very difficult so you do want to watch that when you're doing this so if you wanted to do white wolves or light color wolves I would suggest that you basically do this in reverse. The the ground and everything should be in a similar range to the wolves so that they get pushed into the background and then the vampire again is the most colorful, the most uh, contrasting uh, from dark to light so that she still remains the focus. If, if they're all in similar tonal ranges, then she's gonna get a little lost. Um, yeah it's a tricky thing but anyway i think it's come up well and then obviously as i said you don't have to go to the extent of what i've done here which is the you know the bat dogs i've done like sort of subsurface scattering like you would see on a bat which kind of works for these you know they're vampiric dogs and you know every time i look at that it makes me smile so you know i kind of see bella dama as kind of like that old rich lady with the poodles or the or the chihuahuas you know so these are kind of like her chihuahuas and um just having those those pink 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 ears just uh really yeah, it's, it's just humorous to me, so I like it. But you'd, obviously you wouldn't go as far as this if you were doing it, if you want them to really look like wolves. If you look in, in, in reality, wolves have a lot of fur around their ears, so they don't have as much of that subsurface scattering showing through the ear. That's the light passing through, so you would keep it darker. But you still want a little bit of coloration. I put it into the pores as well, just to add a little bit of color to them. So anyway, uh, let's move on to the real subject of this, which is the, the vampire. So let's get started. So to begin with, we're going to be uh, attacking that um, that dress that she's wearing, and so I want to build up a, a nice blue-green blend. So we're starting off with uh, that uh, should be that dark sky blue, and then. Uh, as a, as a base and then building up with that sick green, the Kraken skin, building down the, the, the dress towards the bottom and building up those highlights. And towards the top, we reserve that for more the blue. So we build in the toxic mist, as you'll see me doing up towards the top. And so what you'll end up with is this sort of blue to green to bright 
uh, on, on the on the raised areas on on that on that dress, and that should give us a really interesting look. Um, and that's that's just you know just something fun to do, and it'll give a bit of brightness towards the top, towards the face, which is also a, re a really positive thing. So once we've done that, moving around to the jacket, and that's just the usual thing that I've shown here on on the wolves. We're just building up those neutral grays, the highlights, keeping it nice and crisp and um, very clean, so that we we don't overly gray this out. Now, normally speaking, you would probably choose a lighter color here to contrast against the wolf because the wolf is also black, but because this fits in with my army, that's uh, what I'm going for. But if you were doing this, you definitely want to choose a, um, a brighter color so that it, it does contrast against that because it'll blend in with the, with the fur. So once all that's kind of done, then we're, we're then looking at the face. And so I've used that Einrach skin uh, mixed with some gray, some cold gray, and just built up those tones uh, to get a nice pallid flesh color and you know you'll 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 see me I'll be just uh, picking out all those areas you know blending in some um, some purple tones into the skin as well to give it that palette look and so then once we're sort of moved on from that to give a little spot color I've used a magenta to uh, put on that scarf to help uh, draw your eye towards the face and give it that that um, that focus and then mixing with white to get the highlights and so from there We've got to do that woolly sort of uh, thing on the jacket, and I've just gone for a, a bone style, you know, just building up through field drab and, and your shabti and white, and then uh, uh, glazing back in uh, some um, green wash and sepia tone wash mixed together to get sort of greeny browns uh, very very watered down so it's like a like a very very light glaze just towards the bottom and into the where it connects to the jacket so you get that nice sort of shadow happening and so then uh, once that's done the hat we've got that rhinox high that nice deep uh, brown and just building in those tones with white to 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 bring a little bit of pinkness pinkness into there just to um tie it in with all of the other pinks that are going on around the model and so that should that should bring that out and then finally those feathers we're just um, you know putting that blue in, into the black and the gray to get it like a, a gray blue highlight um, and then moving into the um, the metallics using golds and brass and metal and then glazing back into those with some with some colored glazes and then finally uh, you'll see me come through and uh, do the legs and so the legs I've built up adding gray into uh, the field drab, sort of those those bone colors and a bit of iron rock skin to highlight. And that should complete it with a little tiny bit of, uh, yeah, the, the um, magenta blue and purple glazing just to really bring it out and make everything pop. And that should be pretty much it. And there we have it, one finished Belladama Volga. So yeah, what a, what a ride. Um, this model was, uh, yeah, definitely challenging. Um, you know, there's a lot going on here, you know, in, in the composition, the wolves, the rock, everything, the tree and, and the vampire, uh, there's a lot competing for attention, but I think I've come up with like, you know, a relatively decent scheme and, and something that, you know, does draw your eye towards the vampire, which is great. So yeah, and obviously it fits in with my army, so that's good too. So yeah, I hope this has been um, informative for you. I'll leave an overview, like a, a better picture of her at the end, so you get a more clear idea of the, the colors that I've used. And I hope uh, some of this gives you some inspiration for your own uh, vampires and your own undead stuff, or even on any other kind of uh, model that uses blue greens or magentas or any of those colors that, that I enjoy using. Um, yeah, yeah, but otherwise it's been really fun. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please hit that like button, subscribe button. It really helps me out. And I guess I'll uh, catch you on the next one.